So when I was a kid, I was a pretty good golfer. And like a lot of golfers, when you're sort of younger, you sort of mess around a little bit with ball fly and you tend to do things that will give you a little bit of distance. Now, I remember quite young on becoming quite a good sort of compressor, a good ball striker. And the way I used to do that is I used to really concentrate on getting the feeling of sort of smothering the ball with my chest, getting that sort of feeling of driving my chest over the ball. And this sort of motion really helped me get quite sort of trappy on the ball. And what I mean by this is really feel that sort of shaft lean and compression on the back of it. And I was great. I used to be able to hit my wedges much further than anybody else, particularly of my sort of age. And I used to play golf with people that were four or five years older than me and used to get sneaky distance on those. And that would be the same with my mid irons. <laughs> With that type of technique, I was able to really compress my mid irons up to say a seven or even a six iron. But I always had a problem with my longer irons, always. I always had this sort of quite low trajectory and I always felt like it was almost like I was permanently playing a stinger. Now for those of you that don't know what a stinger is, Tiger sort of used to play the stinger with the two iron and that's just a trajectory that goes really low and Gary Woodland's got a few of those as well that you'd be able to see if you search for on YouTube. Now, it has its advantages. If you're going to try and hit a tee shot into a, a fairway, which is, you know, where there's going to be lots of run on the ball. But if you're trying to hit a five iron into a green and you can barely get the club, you know, barely get it launching up in the air, then it obviously has very few advantages. So the problem that I had is that my brain, and this is the, the whole reason for this video, is I, I suppose as a kid, I'd figured out this way to compress the board and I'd never asked myself a question if there was an alternative method. That was all I really knew and that was all I ever hung dear to. So I never really had another option away from that because anything that I ever felt that I tried to do to launch the ball up in the air just lent itself to poor contact. So I was always sort of forced upon this sort of smothering stinger where I'd get really over the board and like I say it was it was fine apart from if I had to hit a five iron into a green I'd almost have to anticipate the ball going um, you know landing 20 to 30 yards short and then running up towards the front of the green so what I had to do as time went on is I had to figure out a way to improve the technique and what I had to do is I had to learn how to make better contact with the ball and being less reliant on the body. And the other reason that's prompted this video is because a recent theme that I've been putting out to the channel is I meet a lot of students that come out, reach out for help, whether they're good golfers, you know, they're aspiring professional golfers, whether they're very new to the game, I tend to find golfers have a very similar movement pattern within them. They, they all have this tendency to try and move this way to get good striking on the ball. And quite often you will, as I've demonstrated there, but there'll always be that ramification of a low trajectory or too much out to him. So what I had to learn to do is I had to learn to control my low point more with my hands and bring in my hands more this way so it would create, if you like, a more shallow, uh, more neutral angle of attack and not something that was quite as steep on the back of the golf ball. And obviously through practice and as time went on, I managed to find a way to make the long irons better, a lot better. So I was able to get a better, as good a contact on it. Maybe it didn't feel quite as compressed, but I managed to get the trajectory moving much more upward. So the whole point of this video really is, yes, okay, when it comes to the long irons, this is going to expose most amateurs. And the reason why I expose most amateurs is because you have similar tendencies. As you start the downswing, you have these maybe over the top tendencies. And the longer the club, the less it's going to like you doing that. So if you're somebody who does suffer, with over the top moves and you know that you need to be doing things like dropping your right shoulder down, bringing your hands more inward. What I would propose is why not start practicing with a five iron and a four iron? Because if you're not very good with those clubs, you might find that you're more susceptible to change by practicing with them. That's one of the things that I get a lot of my students to do when I'm working with them on organizing their practice routines. I sort of expose them to the things they're not good at because like I say, you'll find that when you're not good at something, you're probably more willing to have a go. And that's the whole notion of the story. I was really good at compressing long irons, but the trajectory was causing me a problem. So I had to learn to do a different skill. And what the skill equally opened up was just a better swing. And that took me to another level of golf. So hopefully you're finding this video really useful. And uh, let me know. I'll see you soon.